We are having so much fun, and we know you're going to love our next guest. His name is Tony Walker, and he is a comedy guy. Comedy cures everything. So. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, I was uh, I had cancer uh, at the age of 32, um, and I do believe that uh, the laughter and the positive attitude uh, got me through it just as much as the medications did, um, which led to the comedy uh, troupe that I run called Knock 'Em Dead Comedy. We do uh, dinner theater, murder mysteries, game shows, kid shows. Uh, you know, we're not stand up or anything like that. Just comedy shows, variety shows. Do you go to di restaurants and where else? Like theaters? Restaurants, or private parties, corporate events, fundraisers. Did I say fundraisers? Fundraisers, firehouses. <laughs> Comedy shows, their murder mysteries, their audience participation. Um, we, it's a scripted show because you know there's clues and hints that have to go out, but it's not a don't blink or you'll miss something. It's not Agatha Christie. You know, right. it's just it's a comedy. It's it's lighthearted, but one of the characters does get killed, right. and then the audience has to get figure out who, who did it, it and why. Like and if it's a private party or a corporate event, we personalize it. Uh, to fit, you know, their event. Now, do you ask the audience for help for the with the mysteries? Or yeah, they like, they solve it. All based, by themselves. Based on what they saw during the show, we even give them a little section where they can interrogate the suspects. Oh, that's and, fun. You know, so we'll deflect, deny, point fingers at other characters, and but everybody makes the rounds throughout the whole room okay. and talks to people. Well, the is show it? is guaranteed. It's a hundred percent guaranteed. Fun. Totally. Everywhere yeah, we go, always. everybody loves that show. The audience just they just get so involved. And there's just such a part of the show, and that makes it even better. The other things that you do aside yeah, from mystery. Yeah, we do, we do game shows. Oh. Yeah. oh, the game show, we have a podium with lights and buzzers and sounds, and it's basically like a, a trivia game, game show. Or it right. could be, you know, again, we ad lib with that too. <coughs> so they may want a trivia game show, but if we show up and they're a loud, boisterous group and they're a lot of fun, we could ask them to do funny physical challenges or do some karaoke <coughs> or... Whatever or name that tune, whatever we feel like doing, oh, and they'll be willing to do. We will we'll, cool. we'll take it there. <laughs> what movie introduced the phrase "There's no crying in baseball"? Oh, what letter comes after A? B is Is there a favorite skit that you do that just still cracks you up every time you do it? We we do um, we do a lot of audience participation murder mystery shows, uh, comedic murder mystery shows. Um, and there's two shows. We have a, a mob show. We're in New York. You have to have the mob shows. Uh, and we have a redneck wedding, uh, which is just Oh, uh, that I do. I'll it's have to come see that one. Um, you're welcome yeah. anytime. Anytime. In fact, I even well, brought you a shirt. Well, growing up in St. Louis, Missouri, I have to say, you did? <laughs> oh, of oh, course I, I did. I, hey. That you will wear everywhere you go. In fact, I have a whole bunch there. I'm Every, giving one out to everybody. Everywhere here. I go. Okay. That's right. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knock them dead comedy. Oh, that's call. great. Can Knock I them pretend dead I'm comedy. drinking something? Here? Excellent. Okay. Yeah, you can pretend like thanks, you're drinking thanks. something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun on the set. You know, we actually do put a, put water in it when people, when guests ask, we not do. But, this if you, guest, but if you don't, <laughs> you, don't get, you don't ask ahead of time. Wait, this one's full of water. You ready? Nice. One, two, three. All right, there you go. Johnny, you have a good time tonight or what? I had an awesome time. All right. KDC, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. All right. The Knock 'em Dead Comedy Radio Show also brought to you by Two Eagles Auto Body. For more than 25 years, Two Eagles Auto Body has been the leader in auto body repairs and customer satisfaction on Long Island. Two Eagles Auto Body handles every type of auto repair from custom applications and restorations to repairs involving insurance claims. So call Two Eagles Auto Body and ask for John Rossi at 516-328-2527. Okay, we'll just do that for now. <laughs>
Hey, how do you say there, people? It's Johnny Brennan, creator of the Jerky Boys, also of Fox TV's Family Guy fame. I just want to let you know you're listening to Tony and Sally on the Knock 'em Dead radio show. They're going to keep knocking them dead, so keep listening, you wacky sons of bitch. Uh, right there. Over and out there, sweet Charlie. Three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. Hello, Tony. Mookie Wilson here, 1986 Mets. How you doing? Long time no see, man. Hey, man, I miss you guys, man, that knock them dead comedy radio, man. I miss you. I wish I was still up there, man. But I'll wait till it warms a little bit, and hopefully this year things will be a little bit better, man. But when you have, we're talking about comedy, hey, the early years of Mets was a lot to laugh about. You had to make a lot of comedy off those guys. Hey, hope to see you guys during the summer, and uh, hopefully you'll get back on the show, man, at some point in time during the course of the year, all right? All right? Yeah, fine. Contact me, man. All right, Tony. Talk to you later. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Knock Em Dead Comedy Podcast, coming at you live on the Twitch channel of Gov's Comedy Club Podcast. Thanks for joining us right there above my head. Please like the show and share the show all over the place and subscribe to the Twitch channel and whatever else you got to do on Twitch. I, I still don't even know. Oh, and there's the phone number over by a little, yep. I don't know how long it'll last there, but we'll see. <clears throat> we do have Don Sill calling in. 
on that phone number at 1130. Uh, we got a lot to do. A lot to do. Ha- happy birthday to you. I know oh. you're not a big birthday guy, but I'll yeah. say it again. Thank you very much. I, I'm not anti birthday, but I, I I'm just an, anti Mother's Day. I'm anti Mother's Day. That's <laughs> that's actually where my birthday thing comes from because I think that we've all bought into this like one day. Who, what about people whose birthday is on Mother's Day? Because that happens to my wife sometimes. So now you do, like why is her birthday on Mother's Day? Sometimes. Oh, because it changes. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> not her birthday. The no, Mother's Day, right? And so uh, you know, pre having kids. You kind of get screwed, you know. I fuck people with the Christmas thing, oh. like, like, cause I, have you ever run into anybody who has a birthday that's like by Christmas? Well, m- m- I, I I didn't get right, presents. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they didn't care about my birthday. I I feel bad for my son. Sometimes his birthday falls on Thanksgiving, so like it always gets lost. Or even when he wants to get some friends together, it's always like Thanksgiving weekend. So like, that's so getting, awesome. Yeah, but. A lot of them are, you know, I can't. I got a family thing, or I can't. I got plans. Yeah, but you, 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 you do. It doesn't have to be on the day, but the, well, the yeah, but even we, the weekend I mean, is Thanksgiving tough. Thanksgiving's great because it's everybody is there. It's like okay, cool. Well, we're having, and the philosophy is, it's much like when I was in the military. I come home on leave. Hey, I'm going to be here for my birthday from this time to this time. Right. And peop, there's more people around Thanksgiving available to come hang out with you than. And and you have to be kind of smart about it. You you like family things don't go past ten p.m. So say, hey, we're meeting at this bar at nine. Yeah, right. Or come over my house at nine. Like it's it's. Yeah, you're right about that. And so like Christmas people, my brother's the twenty seventh. My sister in law, his wife, is on the twenty fifth. Oh, okay. Right, like my uh, oh, oh, we had horrible, horrible childhood. <laughs> They would only give us one present. Yeah, it was one present that was like twice as good as any fucking present I right. ever fucking got. Right. You got. You got. If your birthday's around that time, you usually get like twice the amount of gifts or or just bigger gifts. You, yeah. And and you, you know, I counted. Yeah, you counted, but it's like children with change. Would you rather rather have this one dollar bill or these five pennies? And kids are like, I'll take five pennies because right. that's more. Right. Like. But exactly, what does that say about you if you're counting? Well, as if what, you're a kid, like you just did, that's different. But, but they, they, they all are like, <clears throat> oh, it's so terrible, and like nobody ever paid. Everybody forgets about my birthday. And, no, we just don't like get it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> my, my, my brother and my sister-in-law for a while were trying to do on um, in July or June or July, like six months, six months out. Yeah, they tried that for a couple of years. And it was like, oh, it's just not the same. No, because it's not your fucking birthday. <laughs> From der- You're so Jewish. Uh, oh, good morning, Ken Pichel as well. Um, all right, so we got a lot to talk about. Oh, sorry, yeah. That's, uh... <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Don Sill is calling in 1130. We're going to talk about the big premiere the other night. I didn't want to do it yesterday out of respect to Hugh Murray because, you know, he wasn't there. He was genius, and it was, he, gr- he if, was you had, great. if you didn't yes. watch it, you got to watch it because Hugh has a lot of great stories and yeah. Like he is a walking parable. Like yes. he has like so many great stories of like how to live life. He yeah, through that his was mistakes. That was really cool. It was the first time I spent a lot of time with him. So yeah, uh, yeah it was really cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to tell a story before we get into all the Comic Sans stuff. Um, so <clears throat> if you watch the show regularly, like most of you guys do, which is much appreciated, I've complained in the past about these soap opera guys. Yeah. Um. Steve Burton in particular, because he's one of the more popular soap opera guys. He's he's on General Hospital. Actually, I don't even think he's currently on it. He They fired him a couple years ago because he wouldn't get the vaccine. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but he's still a name. You know, in the soap opera world, I would still I would say he's still one of the bigger names. And I forget the name of the other guy. He, he's been touring with this guy for, for a long time, but who's also on General Hospital, and they tour, and they you know they come to this club all the time, and it always sells out when these guys are here, and the, the ladies go crazy for this guy. So so pretty much from day one since you know we've been in here, been trying to get him in here to just talk to him, and you know I'm curious about, you know, from an actor's point of view, it's a tough job, and just, you know, get some of the funny stories and talk about how corny the soap operas are and stuff. <clears throat> but every time I've asked to get them in here, the response has been, They'll come in if they get paid. So I'm going, well, screw them. 
and I've talked about it at length several times through the years here. And then just, I don't know, maybe earlier this year, I guess it was, where they they had a show here, and we came in one day, and like they had like their notes, like a bunch of their stuff was in here. And it, it wasn't that bad. It took two seconds to clean up. But, of course, when we went on the air, I just made a bunch of jokes about it. Right. <clears throat> so the other day, Tuesday night, I was uh, engineering Hershey and the Keegs. And I had something to do before the show. So <clears throat> when I finished the show on Tuesday, our show on Tuesday, I did a, I did a few things in here to set up for Hershey and the Keegs because I knew I'd be late. Mm-hmm. And I even told Hershey and the Keegs, uh, the earliest I'm going to be here, I know. The earliest I'm going to be here is 8.30. I said, so, Hey, Hershey and the Keegs, <clears throat> I'm going to be late. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry. And Mark is neurotic and okay. a- and has anxiety and because I knew he'd flip if he got here and I wasn't here. So I had to tell him. Like, right. Mark, like, if anything goes unplanned in here, like, <laughs> like know, yeah, he can't handle it. So, um, so I, again, I knew I was going to be coming in late. <clears throat> told Mark, you know, 8.30 at the earliest I'll be here, but don't worry. When I get here, everything will be, you know, I'll take care of everything. So I come in. It's pretty much 8.30 on the nose. I walk in. And I immediately, I, as I walk in the door, I see the sliding doors open. I'm like, what the fuck? I totally forgot that these soap opera guys were here on Tuesday and they had a show. Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah that- I watched Hershey and the Keek. So <clears throat> I, I did end up seeing, not from the beginning, but I saw, like, you guys were showing, like, the trays of food yes, and whatnot. Yes, right. Yeah, well, so that was the thing. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm in the parking lot, and the place is mobbed. I'm like, and, of course, I forgot, like I said, I forgot they were coming. So I'm like, is it this crazy for Trucin's class? Like, what's with all these cars? So, yeah, so I walk in. The sliding doors are open. <clears throat> and so I, I, like, now I'm walking slow. Like, it's like, it's like the, are the owners in here waiting for me to, like, throw me out? Like, what in the world's happening? As I get closer, I start to see, see stuff. All that food was here, laid out on this table. So I'm like, what the fuck? I hear the music and stuff. So I'm like, and then all of a sudden hit me. It's like these freaking soap opera guys. <clears throat> they got jackets. They got papers. Like th- this was their room. So I'm standing in the doorway, the sliding doors. And I'm just, I'm just like frozen in shock. Like, what do I do now? Right. I see. First person I see is uh, James' wife. Yeah. <clears throat> she waves me. I go. I wave back. I go. Um, I go. Is this soap opera guys tonight? She goes. Yeah. So I point to in here. I go. Should I not be here? Because that's happened before. James has said to me, look, these guys are coming in. Right. If you have anything planned, cancel it. Right, right. <clears throat> she goes, oh, are you doing something in there? I go, yeah, it's Keegan. And, you know, like, I didn't say Hirschman. I just said Keegan. He's got more pull. Short term. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Shorthand, yeah. <laughs> so she goes, well, Yeah, exactly. She goes, go talk to James. I'm like, all right. So I go walking out. He's at the bar. As soon as he sees me, he just knows. He goes, he goes, oh, you, and you know James. He's very to the point, very quick. So he goes, oh, you doing something in there tonight? Right. I go, not if you don't want me to. <clears throat> and he's just kind of like you see he's thinking. I go, I go, I don't have a problem if you don't want me in there tonight. I said, I just have to know. I said, because I got to let uh, Hirschman and Keegan know. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, we'll, we'll take care. We'll clean it up. Like, All right. <clears throat> so I come back. And I come back in, and I'm just looking around again. And I don't know where he came from. I just, all of a sudden, I turn around to face the sliding doors in there Steve Burton he's just looking at me I was like oh he goes hey you the guy you the guy that runs this place th- this room I go uh, actually I am yeah he goes he goes dude he goes you need me to move this move the food I go I really don't think they want you to move the food right I said but yes it's being taken care of he goes dude I'm so sorry I disrespected this room uh, and I'm trying not to laugh in his face at this point right. I go I go it's cool everything's good he goes, no, really. He goes, I love this room. I go, thanks. He goes, no, no, no. I love this room. So I'm like, is he going to rape me? Did you like, fuck this room, <clears throat> Steve Burton? <laughs> I really, I was like, this guy's going to rape me. Just tell us where the jizz is so we can <laughs> clean it up, all right? That, that part you can clean up yourself, right. Steve. So I go, yeah, it, it, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's a nice room. He goes, I hate the green room. So now we're, it's, it's one of these weird conversations where I'm just report, uh, repeating everything he says. I'm you like, hate you hate the, the green, green room. room. <laughs> he goes, yeah. He goes, I hate it. He goes, I love this room. I go, you love this room? Like this is like a bad comedy routine. Right. He goes, yeah. He goes, I just love this room in here. And he goes, he goes, I'm, I, again, I don't mean to re- disrespect this room. I go, we'll take care of the food. It's not a problem. Right. He goes, he goes, no. He goes, I've disrespected this room before. And I go, all right, look. Uh, like this point, I've had enough. I don't give a shit who he is. I go, all right, look. 
I said, I wouldn't say you've disrespected this room. Right. I said, there have been times I've come in here in the morning and I knew that you were here in here the night before. I said, but you definitely didn't disrespect. He goes, oh, no, no, I definitely disrespected this room. He goes, and I don't really mean to. I love this room. So now I'm like, you know, I don't know what's going on. So I just finally said, I go, look. I said, if you really feel bad about what's going on in this room, I said, stop apologizing and come in here. And he didn't really, like, I don't think he got it. So I, so then I said, what do I got to do to get you on my show? Right. He goes, oh, he goes, you have a show in here? I go, yeah, I have a, a daytime show in here. He goes, oh, I'll, I'll do your show. I was like, really? He goes, oh, I'd love to do your show. Goes, That'd be awesome. I'd love to do it. All right. Just at that second, I mean, this whole thing was just weird. Just at that second, um, this woman, Linda, walks by, and Linda works with the club. <clears throat> she handles these guys. She's like She does booking right. for these guys. She books for some other people. I've dealt with her before. <clears throat> so he, he introduces... So, uh, so I'll backtrack a little bit. At some point, he introduced himself to me. I'm Steve. I said, I know who you are. I said, I'm Tony. And then I actually said, so when I was asking about coming in to do the show, I go, yeah, it would be a blast. I remember him from the 80s. I don't know if you remember this show. That, like, you know, like lately, you know, it, you know, you have uh, Drake and Josh or in the 90s, say, by the bell, like these teenage type shows. So in the 80s, there was this teenage show that was on Saturday mornings. About this girl, her mother was Donna Pescal. You remember Donna Pescal? She was in Saturday Night Fever? Yeah. All right. She, if, you might recognize her if you look. If you Probably. Looked Donna Pescal, she was in Saturday Night Fever. She's been around. She's had some shows. She's the mother, right, of this girl, this yeah. teenage girl. Her father um, is an alien. The mother fell in love with the alien. They had this baby. Yeah, I feel like I'm remembering. And, right, now. and the I father, for whatever reason, could never return to Earth. Right. So the teenage girl had like this weird like triangle thing that glowed, right. and that was how she had contact with her dad. Right. And I don't, I don't even remember the name of the show, but <clears throat> she would get into whatever crazy circumstance you know in each episode, and each episode ended with her talking to her dad about what happened, and he would give her Mark her words arson, of wisdom. Come in, arson. Exactly Mark that type of shit. Come in, arson. And he would give her his words of wisdom, and they'd have their little corny moment where the f- you know the freeze frame where she's laughing with dad, you know. But Steve Burton was on this show. He played her boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. So I mentioned that to him, and he had a little laugh at that. And I was like, "Yeah, come in here. We'll have a good time." So yeah, Linda walks by. He introduces me, and I go, "Linda and I know each other, and we you know say hi." So he says, to her, he goes, he goes, Linda, he goes, Tony's going to be in touch. He goes, I'm coming in to do his show. She's like, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I never said in the conversation, I'm not paying you, right? So I don't know if he was still going to do it, but so we do Hershey and Keeg's show, and we had just finished. I mean, literally, I don't even know if it was a minute. They were off the air, so we're still sitting there. The doors are still closed. He's now Steve Burton is now leaving, so he walks past, and I you know I just see him. But sure enough, he stops. He comes back, and he may like and you know I'm sitting here. I don't have the greatest view, so he he's you see him. He's doing like this to make eye contact with me. So finally, I'm like, he goes, take care. He goes, I'm I'll be back. I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, Steve, okay. And as he's leaving, and now he's not you know he's no longer in sight. You take care, man. Good talking to you. I'm like, okay, all right. And I turn to her and I go, I, I think I just made a friend. Like, it was the strangest thing. Oh, now, and that's also what I, I just left out with, with Hirschman. <clears throat> Hirschman, did you see Hirschman's post? No. Uh, Jennifer Aniston's father was an actor. He was right. on Days of Our Lives for years. Right. Hirschman posts this thing about how he loved Days of Our Lives, how sad he is that this guy is dead. So when he came in that night, I said to him, I said, was that a joke? He goes, no, I freaking love Days of Our Lives. I go, are you 60? There was a time period where I, I was super into Days of Our Really? Lives in like the mid <clears throat> the early to mid-90s. I If I watched the soap opera, it was only because there were hot girls in it. Well, yeah. And they always had sex in these in these things. Yeah. yeah. But but no, he was like, like he loved the show. Yeah, no, no, no. I couldn't help but like the story was decent. Really? Yeah, th- at that time. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he, once it started he watched getting, it as a I think kid. It, it went through its redi- <clears throat> like a ridiculous phase. And right. that's when I was like, yeah, I don't really care. So... He, so, so he asked me what, you know, and he missed all this stuff, thank goodness, because he, right. if he walked in and saw the food, he would have, I think he would have dropped. 
That's so, what I was waiting for, actually. I was so, like, oh, okay, when's Hirschman going to be? So he comes in, he sits down, and he's like, so what's going on out there? And, you know, he saw the food, and I go, well, soap opera guys. I swear to God, he goes, and his voice even got high. He goes, Steve Burton? I go, yeah. He gets up, and he goes on, and he starts looking for him. Oh, wow. I don't know if he found him or not. He came back in a few minutes later, and he sits down, and he goes, I can't believe Steve Burton's here. And I, actually, I think it was then I said to him, I go, are you a 60-year-old woman? Like, what, you, what is going on? He was all excited to see Steve Burton. But, um, yeah, it was uh, it was very, it was a weird night. So Steve Burton, who knows, maybe he'll come in and maybe I'll, you know, take back everything I said about, you know, every time I badmouth him about wanting to get paid. Um, yeah, I'll go back and do comments as we're waiting okay. for Don Silver to call back. Uh, oh, Ken Pichel, you're all on the TV. When very nice. To, when you get to Fat Jay. Okay. Oh, Fat Jay, I got to. I got to talk to Fat Jay, too. Bosi, if these ladies have time to watch TV, then they need to get back in the kitchen. Fremder, the other day I walked into my kitchen and my dishwasher wasn't working, so I told her to make me a sandwich. Yep. Sounds like the room might have to be looked over with a black light. I did. I actually I sprayed it down with hand sanitizer. I sprayed this whole room, the tables, the chairs, and I, I grabbed some some, uh, some rags out of the, out of the club's kitchen. And I just and I wiped everything. I wiped this table nice. down completely and the couch. Um, <clears throat> Jesus, is he coming on or no? Is it co- costing you money to get him or is it free? Oh, that's from Jay. And to spit it out because I was like, there was a moment where I was like, are we ever going <clears> to <throat> get to the end of the story? <laughs> oh, come on. It wasn't that no, long. No, it wasn't that long. <laughs> but it was a good story. I thought it was a good story. No. Great story. Oh, what the? Not good. Great. <laughs> you guys are dicks. Well, Jay, Jay, where the hell have you been? The past two Tuesdays, he hasn't been here. I haven't heard from him. I didn't. I haven't heard from Dan. Right. What the fuck? And, 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 I'm not sure about Jay. No, Jay, Jay and Dan both said they were coming on Wednesday. Jay, Jay, co- Jay covered for me, basically. Oh, all right. You're off the hook on that. So, yeah. But what about Dan? Dan said he was going to be at the premiere. He didn't show. It's a kid. <clears throat> so what? Plus, no. was uh, was there anything going on? I can't remember. Well, I mean, Keegan had a show. Was it? Was that the show you were at? Was Wednesday. that the same show? Because we're talking about Wednesday. Yeah. I think there was a show, and I'm pretty sure Dan was may well have been there. Okay, sweaty years. Yeah, true. Don Sill calling in. Let me... Um, all right, I'm just going to finish reading comments, and then we'll uh, then we'll start. Sounds good, Tony Tone, the love bone. <laughs> okay, Don so King of the Hill, better than a dollar bill. Yeah. Um, all right, so Jay, oh Jay's yelling at me to spit it out. Are you shut up? So the father left and never came back. You sure it wasn't a reality show to make us. Long story even longer. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you're catching some shit. Wow, look at I'd rather watch the intro to this show for eighty seven minutes. Oh my goodness. Wow. But fucking all right. Jay, you just assuming you'll be here, Jay, you wait till Tuesday. I'm gonna kick your ass. You don't tag me, I don't come. Oh, really? Is that the deal? If I don't tag you <laughs> Really you don't show up if I don't tag you in the Oh like my I could goodness. swear. I didn't get an invite. In 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 Tony's defense. Now normally I would tear him the fuck down. <laughs> but uh but you guys were actually in here and Tony said like, Hey, so I'll just assume you guys and you guys were all like, Yeah. And I've even told them privately. Yeah. Tuesdays, you guys are here no matter what. If you can't make it, just let me know. But you guys are right. always here on Tuesdays. And I didn't I wasn't tagged again. <laughs> <laughs> me with my logic, right, Jay? <laughs> it's telling me to be, stay out of it. Sons of bitches. <clears throat> and then, Jay, are we doing this Wednesday night? Jay wants to do a show Wednesday night. You know, it's Thanksgiving Eve. Be, I, 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 I might. I, I don't you usually like be to here. travel on, on Thanksgiving Eve. It is a crazy that, night. That's from my, uh, from my <clears throat> bartending days because it's the biggest amateur night yeah. for drinkers. True. And then, Don, of course, if you're around... Come on in. I'm sure the club's got something going on, so it'll, it'll be a fun night. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, Jay says he wants to do it. All right, cool. We'll be here. We'll here be here Wednesday night. And uh, New York Girl is watching. Good morning, New York Girl. All right. With that, boom. Don Sill on the phone. Comic Sands. Fucking nice. Yes. Finally happened. We booked that theater back in September. 
I yeah. it just seemed so far off at the time. Finally, 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 it it came and happened. Dude, it was uh wow, what a great night it was and um I'm still kind of um you know in a in a fog. You know, that's it was the, it was just a great night all around. Uh everything went great from um you know, the attendance, everyone who who showed up, uh all the way to uh the reaction to the movie and everything. It was just everything you would you would want you know, and dream of um, for a premiere like that. So, uh, man, it was uh, such a great night. <clears throat> we were <clears throat> Don was Don was getting nervous. Like, would you say like a like starting like the day before? <clears throat> yeah, it started <clears throat> setting in that I was like, oh man, like you know, uh, I'm nervous and and like real nervous to see what the perception of the movie was going was going to be if people were going to like it and all that. <clears throat> and then I'm questioning, uh, you know my edits and all the kinds of stuff. And, and I tell you, like I I've edited some uh, high end videos on big scale before my lifetime. But this one, for some reason I was more nervous than anything ever I've ever done. <laughs> well, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it totally. Because makes sense. It, it, it's, it's almost like with, with stand up, like everything was you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, I don't think you could avoid feeling that way. And, from a completely unbiased, uh, neutral point of view, it was fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks, man. That, that means a ton, and, and I was uh, so happy, like, like to to have you involved in, in the movie and play a big uh, part in it, and uh, and everybody that was all the cast and crew, man. Like, can't thank everybody enough for really bringing the vision uh, to life and um, and giving great performances, man. Like every everybody really came through there was no r- real weak links i think every scene holds up um and is strong it has its has its moments so yeah it was uh it, it was it was pretty epic to see it on the big screen. And, and it's funny too because when i edit this movie i edit scene by scene right and i go and not in any particular order so this is like one of the first times i actually watched the whole movie straight through <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> believe it or not and uh <laughs> Watching it straight through and hearing everybody laugh when they when they were supposed to laugh and and um, and just in people enjoying it and Carrie Kravitz getting the applause break and and uh, you know big laughs with Joey Cola yeah. it, it, and then the, the you could feel the tension with the Eric half scene and everything just kind of was was just really really perfect and and um, so all the way to the applause at the end of the movie. Yeah. Which everything blew away my expectations uh, uh, I've ever had, and um, but also want to give a shout to Tony for uh, being a great MC, great co executive producer on this this film, and uh, and really bringing the whole sh- the whole uh, night together. So uh, thanks again, Tony, for that. My pleasure, pal. My you guys pleasure. did it was so fantastic. Billy on the on the way home, Billy was like, "That was great." He's like, "That was just really fun and." You know, because it's hard, like, when, for, for me, like, having read the thing. Right, right. And then having shot my scenes and, like, you know, I was like, is this, do I think this is funny because I love Don? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> No, I totally understand. That's why it's so good to get outside, you yeah. know, someone who wasn't involved and <laughs> in, doesn't know some of the backstories or, you know, some of the tribulations we had and, and stuff. To watch it, you know, just unbiased, and to get th- th- that kind of feedback, like you know, like Billy uh, saying that is huge, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, w- it was it was funny because then I, it, <clears throat> I yeah, so it, it, Don was feeling it the day before, and, and at the time I'm like, ah, oh, Don, it's gonna be great. Don't worry about a thing, you know. And then <laughs> and then we're then there. It caught up with you. It caught up with me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> we and and I was too busy. I think I was just too busy to let it sink in, you know, because, you know, I was involved with the theater, and then, you know, um, I was telling Andy before we went on the air that, you know, that we put together a list of everybody who was supposed to come. So I I'm, I'm, I was actually walking around before, like, I'm walking around the lobby, like, checking people in. Like, I don't know why it even mattered, but I was like, I'm checking people <laughs> in. And there were plenty of times I even asked Don, I was like, Don, who are those people? I was like, I don't know. So I would have to go to them. I'm sorry, but who, who are you with? Uh, and I think most of them... Uh, 
brought, said Joey Petroni. Like I think Joey right. Petroni brought like a hundred people. Which, by the way, <laughs> both both in the written version and the way that it was filmed and edited, uh, Joey's my favorite part. <laughs> I, yeah, Joey yeah, was yeah, great. He's my man. favorite. Joey it, like, killed it every time he <clears throat> totally. came on. Yep. It was great, and like I knew some of the stuff because I'd read the whole script and everything. But he 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 was great. Yeah, he really, he really was. was. He was he's a, not he somebody was I know very well, but I was like, dude, you said, like to me. He's he kind of stole outside of you, Don. I feel like <laughs> Joey stole his scenes. You know. Yeah. So yeah, so we were. <clears throat> so I was just too busy. So then. When we're finally ready to start, and Don and I are standing by the stairs to walk up onto the stage, that and I even said, I said, "Holy shit! It just fucking hit me." I go, "We're about to fucking do this!" Holy shit! And we're both just looking at each other like, <laughs> <laughs> and and then I started you feeling beat each other off to release the tension. <laughs> but it, no, see that wouldn't yeah, help. That's our thing. So yeah, we're gonna do that. This is how it played out in my head anyway. See, well, of course it would. But, well. Also, too, when the movie started, the the, you know, the guy and, and right. props to the theater over there. Um, it, they did a great job. It's a beautiful, uh, small little theater. It's my first time there. It's real nice. It had a nice big stage and everything. It was just perfect. But the the guy when he was running the the film, you know, you could still see the cursor moving around the screen. Right. And I'm like, yeah. oh my god, please stop well, doing that. that. I got to be honest. That didn't that 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 like there was only like a moment that I noticed it. The uh, I did. One of my favorite moments, because I could see you, right? You were like two or three rows ahead of me, and we were both on the aisle. Right. So I could see you, and there was a moment when it was like, okay, and now the movie's going to play. And like that. <laughs> and oh, I know right. what you're talking about. Yes. Where, where the screen is kind of like, it, it had its, that whatever design that was on there. Yeah, the movie yeah. hadn't started. Yeah. And I know you, because you turned your head and looked at him. Billy goes, uh, well, so far, this is really good. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. It broke the tension up. Everybody started laughing. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah, because it took them, it took the theater a second to start the movie. That's right. what we're we're talking about. Because they had to turn all the lights out. Right. At first, I'm like wondering, uh oh, is this, this guy can't start the movie right. and all that. You know, everything's going in my mind a million miles per right. second. Right. And then I see the lights start going off. I'm like, oh, good, he's turning the lights off because they don't, they didn't really have a pre anything on the screen prior. So he puts up the movie, and so it's just stuck on like a freeze frame of the opening like uh frame and it's just like uh, sitting there it's just like oh my god it got <laughs> awkward but that's the thing so it sits in that freeze frame and it was only what maybe 10 seconds if that no but it's, it's like but, it was like three seconds it's yeah just, it's the anticipation right stretches that time out it was right. not long at all but uh, but right, i with yeah. i'm with don like i'm walking up the aisle to go to my seat because i sat all the way in the back so it felt like an eternity it like Seeing that on the screen, that ten seconds felt like an hour. And even me walking up the aisle, I felt like I was moving in slow motion. Like I even, you know, I'm walking backwards. A one-legged man walking uphill backwards <laughs> is not an easy thing to do. But I'm, but I'm like just staring at the screen. I'm like, please start, please start. Why isn't it starting? Oh my god, what the fuck? And then I even had to walk past the guy who was working the computer. So by the time it was probably starting, just as I was getting there, so I actually looked at him. I went, okay, good. Like. <laughs> you know, but then later on, I'm like, why did I even say that? He probably wanted to hit me. Like, get out of here. I know what I'm doing, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they were great over there. It was uh, it was good times. You know, um, it was great seeing everybody that that, uh, that came through too. You know, it was it was uh, awesome. It was a star studded premiere. Uh, I'll have I'll have to ask you, Don, because I asked uh, Tony before we came on. Uh, did you hear us kind of heckling you guys? <laughs> no, <laughs> when we so, while like, we were on stage. Or yeah, like there was the pretty much any time that like you guys hugged or you hugged anybody, <laughs> I was yelling. <laughs> I was yelling, "Kiss him!" Oh, <laughs> kiss him! <laughs> I, I, there, there is a theme here, though. You know, you wanted me and Don to jerk each other off. You wanted us to kiss. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a little nervous no, right now. And when you brought Austin Brooks up, I was like, "Kiss him!" <laughs> <laughs> so Don, are you? So you're on the phone with us, are you? But are are you seeing? Like, do you have? Are you in front of the computer? Yeah, I'm. I'm watching. <clears> okay. Also, yeah, because yeah, I've been showing some pictures a little bit through, throughout here and there, but um, but now I'm show, I'm going to show some pictures of you know people um, that came. Yeah, like the premiere and like, oh yeah, there was tugboat. Tugboat. tugboat Manny tugboat. was there. Uh, let's see. I think I showed this already, but I'll show it again. It later. was great to see Tugboat Manny there because I, I never uh, actually met him in person before. Oh no, cool. awesome oh, wow. that. 
Yeah, <clears throat> and I always liked him and, and um, admired him and think he's a very funny guy. Oh, yeah. I, right. tr- I tried to get him on years ago to um, be a judge and pursue Sue and stuff. <clears throat> so it was great to meet him, and, and afterwards he had a lot of nice words to say to me about the film. And, nice. And uh, that meant a ton uh, as uh, well. And and that was the cool thing, too. With I mean, a lot of these, here's Paul Bond, picture of Paul Bond. That was the thing. Like, there was a lot of... Like that, we just didn't know that certain people were showing up, and uh, and it was just it, it was wild to see that you know that some of these some of these people showed up, you know, like it unexpected. was awesome. Yeah, it yeah. was it was definitely awesome to see Paulie Bond there. Uh, Paul and I, I go way back with Paul to the days of WUSB Radio. He was uh, one of our first real big gets at the time. I remember, you know, we we had a lot of like, you know. Um, open mic level comics coming through the, our radio show all the time. And then, um, but then when we had Paul Bond, he was our first kind of like headliner guy. And, and, uh, he loved what we were doing and me and him hit it off. And I've been, uh, friends with him for years and years. And, and, uh, I, I had invited him, you know, on the Facebook thing, but, but I didn't know that he was coming or not. So it was definitely a pleasant surprise when I saw Paul there. Yeah. I will. He had a lot of great things to say about it also. And, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, and for our little group, like, uh, who I was sitting with, Emily, Billy, and I all all have a um, a, a, a connection with Paul. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. he's kind of our mentor. Each of us have, have have had him as a mentor at different points. He's a great Paul's guy. Paul's great. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, very funny guy. He's been around for a long time. And I'm seeing the picture now with... with um, with Emily Moe and, uh, and the big man himself. Um, and it was just great to see all of them uh, turn out and, and uh, also had, you know, enjoyed the movie. You know, because that was a big thing. You know, <clears throat> comics are, are could be harsh critics, you know. And, Absolutely. Um, to get the kind of the, the uh, nod of approval from my peers, um means a ton it's it's priceless stuff so well something yeah. that, that you might have missed that for us like for 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 like comics of uh, in the comedy scene it was like one of the rare nights that's like uh that makes it feel like high school right and it right. makes it feel like we're connected <clears throat> oh okay yeah in in a in a way <clears throat> where like yeah we all have our different corners and everything but now there's a thing that we all kind of get to go to we, that, we, we all got to be together without having to work right so it was a nice opportunity for everybody to just basically kind of celebrate each other in, right. a, in a way right and yeah it, it, it was it's it's like tony landolfi's party uh that or, neither don or i get invited to you were invited no you we just weren't. don't come <laughs> Uh, I know Tony through the years, Tony Lindorfi through the years, but I don't know him like like that. So no, 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 I, I no. He he invites all of like he. If you're uh you're in comedy, uh, you're invited. Um, and, and uh, like here I am inviting for you, but this is what's been told <laughs> to me. I'll tell Tony that you, you know that. But it's so great. He's <laughs> so great. It's such a great party. But it that's what the feel of the thing was. Yeah. it was very much the same way in that we did just get to hang out and i was even thinking to myself i'm like wow it's so crazy like i kind of feel the high of performing but i didn't have to perform yeah right oh this is you so did the work great. Yeah. yeah no it, fe- it was like this is fantastic uh but, <laughs> jay it's let a sickness celebration a, let me ask you guys a question sure. how did it feel for you <clears throat> both of you when you first saw your scene up on the big screen and uh like what goes through your mind at like when like Tony's in the opening scene, pretty much after me and Joey's car scene, like when the movie really begins, begins. Right. Tony's like the first face you see, and then uh, so tell me, Tony, how did that feel? And then Andy, how did it feel? I'm just curious. I well, <clears throat> um, and I mentioned it the other day uh, here on the show. Um, I had to go to the theater in advance on Monday to to make sure everything was working and go over sound issues because there were a few different options for sound and there were a few things that had to be, you know, we basically had to do a test run. So that was my first time seeing it on the big screen. Um, so I I was standing, I'm standing in the aisle just watching it. They're, run, they're running at the theater, just making sure it's going well and it's just me. The, the guy that was running it, he put the, put the movie on and he walked out of the theater to go get something i forget what, what he was doing but so i'm watching it and then it, i did i was watching 
I was probably probably about halfway through when all of a sudden it hit me. Like, I'm actually just standing in this theater by myself watching this, and I realized that I was smiling. I didn't even, like, it didn't even, you know, it took me a few (laughs) minutes. Like, like the reality had to set in a few minutes later that that I realized, like, I was actually standing there like this watching the screen. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" But and but that's when I started like having a conversation with myself, like, "This is freaking cool." Nice. I'm seeing all I'm seeing this great movie that I'm a part of on the screen. All my buddies are in it, and everybody's great. And then, th- so then I start. That's when I was like taking notes now, so I don't forget it. You know, like like the sound, like that sound of you, you know in the movie theater, like the the sound comes out, but then there's that split second echo as it bounces off the yeah. back wall or the side walls. Like so, I was even taking that in. Like, like this is like a real movie, and I'm in it, and my buddies are in it, and me and Don. After all these years of talking about doing something, like that's when it really was just sinking in, and that that was my moment. So it wasn't it wasn't on Wednesday at the premiere. It was it was that that day at the test run. But yeah, it was very surreal, awesome. very right. cool, and very surreal. Nice, yeah. Well, that's I said. So uh, Fremder sat right behind me and Billy and Emily and Mo were right in front of us. And I turned to all of them at one point and I said, "Well, I guess we're going to find out how I feel about seeing myself on the screen." Because <laughs> 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 I wasn't sure how I was going to react, and I, I was like, "I look so sweaty," because of course I was sick when we were filming that. Uh, and uh, I'm like, oh, I'm so sweaty. Very oh. cool to see Fremder, by the way. Yes, it was very cool to see Fremder. Yeah. I, I, I did. There were certain things that I'm like, oh, I wish I kind of had done that differently. Uh, you know, I know there was a, like I felt pretty. I felt inconsistent in my performance when I when it was happening. The editing made it look a lot better. Uh, so I mean, like, yeah, I mean, for for being under the weather and and um, and then you had. You were up against the clock. Yeah. You had to go. That was, oh, show. that's what you were talking about. Yeah, because cause when, when I said, because uh, I wanted to fuck with you, and I got up and I said the thing about, uh, Don, would you say I was great or the greatest? <laughs> 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 and then uh, uh, you said something about like having to go to an Aragonas, and it was like, a, yeah, I had to go to a fucking, this crazy diner in Kings Park. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm like looking back, I'm like, I wish I missed this for the, for to, to like concentrate more on the filming. Like, <laughs> that would have been a lot better. Who know? who uh, is? What I was trying to tell you, but that, no, <laughs> but, no I, but I got paid for I, that, I, Don. I got paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that in, in all honesty, even the fact that you um, only did a, a few takes, you're up against the clock. I think you did a really solid performance. Memorable lines. You got a lot of laughs. Yes. you know. And, uh, and yeah, man, I mean, and, and then also now that we've all like kind of seen what we're capable of, Th- yeah, I this... think for the next one, we're going to, you know, everybody's going to, um, you know, everybody knows what, what we can do. And, and I think, it, it, you know, put and more, even more... I, I know from, from reading it, uh, I was like, okay, this is funny, but I can't pick, cause obviously it's not my vision. I can't picture how this is going to go. I have a a view in my head of what I think right. is going to happen. But so for me, it was so great seeing how you like cuz cuz again, you like you said I had some good lines because you wrote them. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. that I, and that's what I kept saying. People were like, "Oh, you're so good." I'm like, "Please, please, any if you are if you're giving me any kind of compliment, really you should be complimenting Don because between the, the giving direction and the lines that you guys gave me was that that was you know I just but, I was a vessel. No, I appreciate that, and you also have to understand too that when I'm writing it, I was writing in, in your voice and you in mine. So, you know, you definitely delivered it in a way that like n- you know nobody else could have. So, I mean, it's it's all synergy, man. It goes it goes both ways. Right you know? on, right on. I think before we go any further, I'm now showing a cast picture. Um, if you look at this cast picture, you'll see behind Sally. It, well, actually, in between Sally and her, and that's her son Sam on the end. Um, in between them is Johnny Lambros. Now, I just think before we go any further, we just have to mention how important it was that he, he was there and in this movie. I thought it was very sweet. <laughs> I. I've grown in, in a lot of appreciation. At first, I was very apprehensive to Johnny Lambros, but I think he's there as, uh, what, a uh, 
a symbol for all of the people all who the, are in all the, the extras. audience. <laughs> <laughs> he represents all the, yeah, all the people from that. Um, so we were, we were taking a picture at the end. The, the whole night was over, and, and um, I, I don't remember, Don, if it was you. Somebody said, no, we got to get a cast photo. That was probably Wendy. Wendy really wanted to cast pictures. Oh, okay, cool. It, it, great idea, by the way. Yeah. And so, so I made the announcement. Oh, sorry, before because a lot of people were walking out. In fact, Joey Cole was already out the door. Thankfully, somebody grabbed him and asked him to come back. So I made the announcement. Please, you know, if you're in the movie, please come up. We want to take a picture on the stage. So Johnny Lam- Lambros, he comes to the edge of the stage and he yells up to me. He goes, "What about us extras? Can we take the picture too?" And I was like, "I was like, no, nah, you're just you're just an extra." And he, and he just had this look on his face. And I, I said, "All right, hold on a second. So I yelled over to Don. And Don's like, "Yeah, of course." And I'm like, "Come on up." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dick. It's sweet. No, Eddie. no, I, no. It's I, totally I, cool. I'm messing with him. It's cool. No, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, it was it was just such a a a, a great night, and it, it's like it's like the kind of night I've, it felt surreal. You know what I mean? When when totally. everything just kind of works out that way, and, and it's it's the night you dream about. Um, so, you know, it was huge, and and I, I you know, like. You know, Keith Anthony was there, showed up. Yeah, that uh, was cool. You know, both owners of um, Governors were there. Um, and and there was so much family and friends that came out. And, and like you said, uh, you know, Billy Geyer, Emily Santosis, Mo Meltz were, were all there. And I would have loved it to see, you know, I know a lot of guys had shows that night. Like Dan LaRocco uh, told me that he had a show that night. Oh, uh, did he? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think um, same thing with... Um, with uh, Joe Cravella also uh, hit me up and told me that he, he wished he could make it, you know, stuff like that. So there was a lot of those. Um, Michelle Fox was there. Um, yep, Mary so Capone. Now I see with Sherry Poland. Um, Michelle Fox came through. Mary Capone um, was there. It, so it was, it was great. There was a, um, a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, there's uh, Keith Anthony, John Blend, and, of course, our very own uh, Austin Brooks with uh, it looks like a photo bomb from Emily in the background there. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, it was, it was, it was friggin' awesome, and uh, yeah, John Blend coming through, him and his wife, and uh, they took some uh, outstanding photographs. Yeah, there we are, the two Joeys, and with uh, Sally in the background there with uh, with Butone. There we go. There's um, Shai Paul and Austin Austin Brooks, and Austin Brooks. I felt bad because I was kind of again. I'm in a fog state. I'm kind of overwhelmed, and and I'm trying to think of all the cast members and thank everybody up there, and I overlooked. For whatever reason, I forgot to mention Austin. So I was happy, actually, that Paul Bond called me out on that. <laughs> we ended up bringing right. Austin up on stage and doing a little Q&A with, with Austin as well. He was great. He's a natural. He's got likability. I don't know what it is about <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> it's just his materials. It's fucking terrible. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, <laughs> Carrie, Sherry. We saw uh, Carrie just the last one with uh, Joey Cola. There's me and Austin. Yeah, it was good times, man. Um, we got the movie poster. It's signed. We have those little cards. Uh, there he is, Jeff Bosey, there with the two Joeys. Yep. Nice. Bosey lost a lot of weight. There's um, me, uh, Sally, with Butone. That was a uh, great, man, great picture. That's up on the stage. Yeah. And there's Mo opening her mouth for Andy. Oh yeah, that's a great. I mean, you're just, gonna fucking what she wrote in there in the, the post was hilarious because I was up on stage and I was telling about the scene with Andy and how if when you watch the movie, uh, Andy is a figment of my drunken stupor, my drunken imagination, and um, because I'm a recovering alcoholic and all this stuff, and but I'm up there talking about how Andy's my fantasy man or whatever. So she she. Uh, she played off that. Well, it was funny because beforehand, a lot of people were asking me, and I guess everybody else had an easier time with the question, but John Blend specifically, because I ended up going full anxiety with him. Because <laughs> he goes, uh, so uh, what's your part in this? And I go, I'm... Uh, you know, I'm I, I'm there to, to offer some advice at a key moment. <laughs> Right, and and he's like, as is every oh, p- aspect of your life. So, yeah, but what do you plan? And I'm like, I would rather you just see it. <laughs> right, right. You know, like I, I I'm like, I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to ruin. And he called you a dick and walked away. He was, he was, he was like, <laughs> we'll talk about it after. I'm like, yes, 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 that's it. But I was also pretty high, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> just wanted to not talk to people at that point. <laughs> But to, uh, but afterwards, you know, I mean, I just showed the picture. You know, people were crowding over you for autographs. Well, you're the one. That Don's like, oh, sign, oh, sign those autographs, and I'm like, uh, okay. Like that, I that's no one kid. of my favorite pictures. Actually, is uh, seeing Andy with a crowd around him signing uh, autographs. Yeah, well, I am blocking the aisle, so the the crowd is <laughs> understandable. <laughs> It's all about perception, man. Perception is reality, Andy. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's true. Um, <laughs> but I, I believe, I'm, look, look at the comments. I believe I was in Comic Sand. Is, is that Bosey? Yeah. That's my totally guess. Bosey, yeah. 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 And he said he put his head down in embarrassment because of the movie because he was seeing himself in general. I think Bosey did a really fantastic <clears throat> job. Absolutely. You, oh, yeah, totally. When, you know, and I've edited, like, those scenes, uh, uh, you know, a million times of tweaking it constantly, but seeing it all flowing on the on the big screen, I think um, Boshi really popped, and his character really kind of came through, and and uh, and I just think it was, he 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 did great, man. Absolutely, yeah. So oh, and no. and he played he plays. It's so weird that he plays gay so well. <laughs> well, that, I saw him last night at uh, the Cheese Show, and uh, he, I was like. I, Bozy, I didn't realize your character was gay. And he's like, well, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably kind of the, the the inspiration of one of those comments about right. playing gay. <laughs> See, uh, Bo yeah. Bozy is gay for pay, right? Bozy's, so um, we could say not that. just pay, I think. Yeah, he was great, and, he, and he's, um, and uh, oh. yeah, but Bozy's also a good sport and, uh, yeah, and a absolutely. great guy. So yeah. kudos to, to Jeff Bozy. Yeah, here's, uh, here's Tony now with... Um, that's uh, that's Chris uh, Thomas. Um, <laughs> yeah, one of my favorites. Um, <clears throat> and we, I showed a picture... Uh, where'd it go? I showed a picture before of... Oh, you know what, Don? While I'm looking for some pictures here, you mentioned quickly the applause Carrie got, but talk, talk more about that, because that, to me, was such a big deal. So I'll take it back for anyone who... Who's listening that doesn't know kind of the backstory? Yes, yes, exactly. So, Kerry Kravitz, you know, kind of a you know a local hero here, at New York comics. She's been for on sure. the scene for a long time, and she's kind of a big deal here at Governors. And um, she just had a crackle special, like right in the beginning of COVID. It came out like right before we all locked down, and she had a big special come out and all this stuff. And she's you know been in and out of um, sitcoms throughout her career, so she's a big deal. So we were doing the table reads, and all the table reads we did for this film, we did there right in the studio where you guys are sitting right now. And uh, we would just have the whole cast there, and we would go through the script. And we just got Eric Half signed on. So this was Eric Half's kind of first day with the cast and crew reading through. And there just happens to be a show going on. It's like a Thursday night, and there's a show going on in the other room. So there's all these comics, including Joey Cole, is floating around, Carrie Kravitz, all these other comedians. So they, they get wind that half is uh, in there doing a movie, so the interest starts to bubble up. And then Carrie kind of barges in, and she's like, there's a movie going on in here, and I'm not in it? I want to be in this movie. You know, kidding around with us, like half kidding, half serious, I thought. So she was like, is there any women roles in this movie? Whatever. So I was like, after she left, I looked at Tony. I was like, dude, if we could get Carrie Kravitz in this thing, that would be huge. So Tony's like, I agree. Let's get this going. Blah blah blah. So I was like, all right, cool. Was, all, was that me? We all have our Tony. Yeah, Lover. Right, Tony impression. It's all like, based on Yogi the Bear. He's like, <laughs> he's like, we got to do this. We're gonna get Carrie Kravitz. I'm telling you right now, we're gonna get her. And then we'll I'll get a couple of pick and egg baskets. I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. So, um, so Tony, Tony does make shit happen. He called me up the next day. He goes, yeah, Carrie said she'll do it. You know. So I was like, all right, cool. So I was like, uh, let's start working on this. So um, Tony's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this. I'll write it. So I was like, all right, cool. So t Tony wrote uh, a lot of the bulk of kind of what, what ended up being in the final script. He he really kind of set the tone for what Carrie's character was gonna be. And then um, I I kind of placed it in, in and weaved it into the storyline. So between the two of us, we created the scene with Carrie in there that Carrie start the entire movie now. Like we threaded it right in, yeah, and it it actually enhanced the story, made the story better, gave it an, a, a new dynamic, gave it gave it a little extra kick. It wasn't just a cameo now; now it's part of the story. And um, well, and it helped your character too. 
I think. Yeah, it helps. It, it, yeah, it really, helps. like, uh, anybody could uh, could relate, like, like to, to be, you know, relationships and, like, obviously, you know, it's not the optimum relationship, but, you know. Right. Yeah, it's, it's you know, and, and also she, and then also the other thing is she wants a favor from me and I can't do it. So it's it, it all comes back to, to reflect. It's kind of like... Um, Remember the movie? Uh, was it Gulliver Travels? When he's, first he's with the little people, he's with the giants, and he's got. So it's kind of like that in a way where where here I am with Carrie, and I'm in the the, the power seat, and I uh, tell her I can't do it, uh, help her out, and then then it, it flips on me where I'm not in the power seat position, and somebody else is, and they can't help me out. So it it, it all kind of worked itself out, and, and then the real crux of the whole Carrie. Uh, storyline is when we shot the thing she killed it and then when i edited it, I, I knew it was it was gonna be something special so i never shared it like i didn't really put it in too many uh promos and then um when she delivered the goods in front of that audience on screen she ended up getting a huge applause break yeah. everybody <laughs> right in the middle of the movie right she they just stopped and applauded for her yeah, no, it was yeah it was you i got goosebumps i was so uh happy did, um, did you guys notice i don't I, I don i don't think i asked you this in the times that we've talked since so carrie's in two scenes and the and the so we see her in the first scene you know uh that she's in you know and and i don't want to give a lot away but she's obviously you know from the very from the first time we see her we know she's not happy with you right <laughs> where is he <laughs> right <clears throat> so then the second time we see her it's right after you see with Andy, and you open the door, and there she is standing there waiting for you. Now, right. I don't, I don't know if you guys heard this. I heard it, but it was faint. But I heard it. There were a few. Let's. So Don opens the door, and there's Carrie waiting, and there were a few <gasps> like that. <laughs> and I laughed my ass off That's when I heard great. that. Uh, the, the when you heard the <gasps> yeah, like, there, yeah, there was actually a few people in the audience who went. <gasps> You know, like oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, in the audience, yes, yeah. yeah. Then my dad was like, "Oh my God, there she is!" <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that was classic, man. I died. I was laughing my ass off. Bozy is referencing uh, the never-ending hallway, and it was something I was going to bring up too. Where I guess, like, knowing the place and just like the way it's cut, it's like it's seamless. Like, I don't, I think anybody who is unfamiliar with back here, the back hallway. It would right. not see would not it would not occur to them that it was like the same hallway <laughs> well it was two different hallways yeah the, but but you know it was well one was the side that leads down to the bathroom i guess and right. then the other one was the one that leads to the giggle room but then when you came out you came th like it was it looped like in in real life you suddenly appeared at the wrong part, yeah. Right, yeah. but in 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 the movie world, like people don't know what it's like back right. here. Sure, so right. it was like, and I thought to myself, I'm like, brilliant. That's so that, that was such a <laughs> right. very smart use of the space, <laughs> like that. Because I'm like, yeah. So the other, any of us who've been back here, like, yeah, we're like, wait, they were in the bathroom, and now he's coming through. Yeah, this, right. Yeah, exactly. this door here, but that's great. People don't fucking know that. I, I was actually <laughs> super psyched. It's that, like the Brady Bunch. They used the house. The house on the outside is not the house on the inside. Right. Uh, Jewel, <laughs> Jules was there. She said, such a great night. Great film. Great cast of characters. I'm proud of you all. Very nice. It was Thank great you, Jules. meeting Jules. I, I met her um, uh, briefly when she was coming in and stuff like that. And, and I, I recognized her, you know, from being on your show so, <laughs> so many times. So it was, it was really cool to meet her yeah, as sure. well. Yep. Uh, yeah, a lot of great people. Like we said, Keith Anthony was there. That was the one, uh, Don, I was telling Andy before we went on the air. Because Keith Anthony, it, it, Keith Anthony is, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange thing. Like, he's not a household name. He's, you know, he's not as big as he should be, in my opinion. But <clears throat> in the comedy world, he's huge. Right. And he's one of those guys that when, you know, when... when Everybody and the, all the comedians, they drop what they're doing and they stop and listen every Absolutely. time he does something. So <clears throat> it was really funny because when he walked in, Don and I happened to be standing next to each other, and I and I did. I thought to myself, "Is that Keith Anthony?" I'm like, but in my head, I'm like, it can't be. Like Don and I, and we talked. We did talk about this. We were, we didn't know that people like Tugboat Manny were coming. We didn't know that you know a lot of Paul Bond was coming. Like right. some of these bigger names in the Long Island scene. 
We didn't even know they knew about it, right, you know? Right. So um, I start tugging Don. I'm like, who is that over there? And he's, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not really sure who that is. I go, is that Keith Anthony? He goes, uh, no, can't be, you know? So we're, we're just looking at each other back and forth and talking about it. It was like a bad <laughs> Abbott and Costello scene or something. We're just both of us like, is that Keith Anthony? I don't know if that's Keith Anthony. It can't be Keith Anthony. <laughs> yeah. So Bond. It was. Yeah, so uh, Paul Bond happen to, happens to be walking by. So I actually grabbed him by the arm, and I, and I brought, brought him in. I go, who is that over there? Oh, that's Keith Anthony. And we were like, holy shit. Like, we, we it just was so couldn't cool. believe it. <laughs> and some of these guys were coming in like Keith Anthony. You're like, holy shit, man. And then, you, like I said, man, like even afterwards, Keith Anthony came up to me, and he, he, he was like, raving about the, the movie he had yeah. a lot of great things to say about it and then the, the one thing he said he goes i tell people all the time how much talent is out on long island and we need to showcase it more and this is the kind of movie that really shows all of that yes so i thought that was huge a huge accolade from from keith anthony and um michelle fox yeah. said some said something just very similar to that as well yeah yeah, yeah. michelle fox uh it was <clears throat> you know she had a lot of nice things to say it was great to see her there as well and you know just to get the support from the comedy scene like that from yeah. all uh, all levels was was huge you know like i said it 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 went beyond my expectations and um you know and it was just it just was incredible like i you know what i mean right. and i can't wait to do the next one and i'm hoping we could start on the next one sooner than later yeah. i already started drafting out a script plus i still have the other movie too right which is in a different, uh, it's it's not part of the comic sans storyline it's a different story altogether but i want to get that off the ground too so there's a lot of things that you know um projects that are in the works for 2023 yeah right um so i'm gonna i'm showing this picture of james again um james was there james from governors um and i'm showing that because um i just want to thank governors for all all their support and i'm going to read joe carletto's post from yesterday um it was an honor to have all the people that grace our stage stages in such a funny movie filmed at our club governor's comedy club i don't say this often but i believe this is a winner congratulations to cast and crew thank you all for making me laugh tonight um that man uh, is the living embodiment of charm <clears throat> yeah that absolutely is right damn charming <clears throat> man yeah it, it, class, full, class, act, class, class act that's exactly what i was gonna say class, class. all the absolutely. way man all the way and they and, <clears throat> i got to sit i i sat in an aisle but on so you and Don had an aisle that one aisle I sat on the on the aisle side of the the next aisle right and I didn't even plan it because Sa Sally saved me a seat um, right right next to me on the other side of the aisle was James and and Joe Joe was laughing his ass off throughout most of the movie <laughs> and I'm so I you know so I'm watching the film I'm taking it all in I'm enjoying it. I mean that was a big deal too you know like Don you know sitting there. Having already seen it, having already seen it on this big screen, now I get to enjoy. Like the more I'm hearing laughter, right, right. Yeah. the more I'm like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! These it's people happening. are laughing. We're, we did it!" Yeah, yeah. But, and but I, the right parts. <laughs> yes, right. but I also spent a lot of my time looking to my right because there's Joe Carletto laughing his ass off, and that you know and there's that was like another like. Like that was like a like feeling of like hitting a home run too. Like Joe Carletto was freaking laughing. I I actually yeah. have a question, Don, and I've been thinking about it since it happened. And you know, it was too much that night to bring up. But there was a <laughs> there was a uh, there's a scene the scene of with you and half to Ma, uh, Billy and Mac, Big Mac, and um, it's you get it's it's Max got the line, and it's about how horrible open mics and bringer shit, you know, like, like kind of that right, yeah. in that vein. And I felt like when I read it, it was like a dramatic thing, but what ended up happening is the comedians all laughed and I didn't right. see, uh, the regular audience, the, 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 the non-comedian <clears throat> audience laughing at that point. Like they were taking it as that serious right. moment of like, right. you know, it sucks like this fucking sucks. That part. Well, there's a lot of insider stuff in there, right? Right, right. Like, and that's like, what I'm saying. And I think that it was. I'll tell you what the effect was on on all of us were like that. There's a kinship felt to the to to it, and I right, right. like talking to Keith Anthony, talking to Paul Bond afterwards. Like that were things that they were saying is like like it got 
like what all of this well, is. And even Joey Cola said on the microphone in the Q&A after, this was his story. Right. I this mean, because they've all been through that. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. And they, they all were able to identify, and even all of us at the levels that we all are on, uh, we also felt it. <clears throat> and, and so we were laughing at that part. But I felt yeah, like everybody else w- was was taking it like how I thought it was originally. So was it, when you wrote it, was it, for dramatic effect or comedic effect? Well, it's hard to answer. Right. Because when, when I wrote it, when I wrote it, I wanted it to to feel real, right? Yeah. And I wanted it to be a, a legitimate give and take. So when, when I'm, it, the, the beauty of when you write like that with two characters that disagree with each other, it's all coming from me, right? It's all coming from the same brain. Right. So I'm like playing both sides of the coin. So I'm like, all right, well, here's the, the, the pro of open mics is, you know, build your voice, build all that stuff, right? And create right. who you are. You, and then the, the con is, hey, who are we performing for? We just perform for each other and, and all that kind of shit. And you know, Wednesday open mic nights because, you know, you see so many people have these all-star nights. Hey, it's the future all-stars, future. Right. And it's, it's almost condescending in, in, in a way. So, when I put it in there, I think it was the sarcasm, and I think that, that he had, and I think that that sarcasm uh, is, is an insider type of thing where I think comedians will get it, musicians, anybody who performs right. will understand what the, the, the sarcasm is, so they will tend to laugh at that or be like, oh, shit, you know, he's right, right you know, that kind Somebody of thing. Somebody's saying it. I, I think there was, I, I, because Heft, Heft was great. Yeah, he, he, was. he was fantastic. No, he killed it. He was awesome. <clears throat> and he had... During that scene, he had this look on his face like he was going to possibly, like, like lash out and beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Right. And I think I think that's where some laughter was coming from. I think people were expecting, like, they thought there was going to be, like, this, like, stirring moment. He was going to blow, and it could be either yeah. really heavy or very comedic. So I think they were just, like, the laugh, some of the laughter was, like, an anticipation feeling. Well, well see, that, uh, what I was noticing was that it was the comedians around me, like, we were laughing. <clears throat> yeah. And I was looking over, and there were people who were like looking, like intently, like right, they were listening right. to it, like, "Oh wow, this is like a very emotional moment. Mm-hmm. Like they're having this conflict, they're having it out. Like yikes, yeah, what's gonna happen?" Whereas us who have experienced this, we're kind of like, <laughs> "Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right." <laughs> it, it was, um, and that's the cool thing about comedy too. And pretty much like all you know, music is a lot like that too. When, when you're in the scene, you never know who's going to pop in that scene. You never know who's going to sure. become the next. Right. And and the thing is, anybody can, any one of us, you know, um, at any open mic. When you look around, any one of those people could be the guy who or girl who's going to make it. Who's going to pop? Right. You yeah. know, like you know, like you got to remember, like Paul Bond and some of those guys started with Kevin James. Right, they, they started with you know Valentine and, and all those guys and and uh, and Joey Cola and all them and so that they've seen it happen, so that they know it's it's real and and um, you know and a lot of those guys too have been asked, you know they've been in a similar situation where they've been asked by a younger comic or a newer comic, say, hey man, throw me a bone, and get me on your show, and, right? You know. It's like in, in rap music, you know, everybody has a demo. Hey, listen to my demo, man. You know, it's kind of similar to that in a way. So I guess, you know, so for Billy, I think also that character to ask this guy that he came up with was also hard. It was like hat in hand moment where it's like, you know, I don't even want to ask this guy. <laughs> I'm trying to hint around it. And he goes, yeah, you said that already, Billy. You know, and so he's like kind of forcing him to just say you know basically what do you just tell me what you want billy right i I, you know it's like i like from my own watching it and when i read it and and from watching it like it was like it was it was very beautifully written and very beautifully acted by the two of you and it really touched a nerve but i also think (laughs) that it was so well written and so well acted that the people who are not comedy or not in the performance fields, I think they're going to feel it too, you know, which is so great. It, it's a funny movie. Oh yeah. Well, but well, I feel know, like I think that- the ending, it all comes to, to a head. And, and I think that too, um, and like I said, I to the Q and a as well. I think that the Billy 
the storyline of Billy. This guy's been at this doing this job for 25 years. He's still kind of at the same place he was when he started. He's seen people pass him up, pass him over, become hugely successful, right? Um, I think we all feel that way in one way or another. Some kid from high school that you used to bully or something, right? He, he's now a millionaire, you know, or, you know, you know what I mean? Or if you're at the job for so long and you just, the, the, the kid who used to be your intern is now your boss. Right. Like those type of things and those type, of, I, I think people could relate to. I think we've all kind of um, had that happen to us in one form or another, right. one way or another. Well, I t- I, I, uh, well, yes, I just think it, it was, again, so well written and so well acted that it conveys that emotion for somebody who is even unfamiliar with something that's like that. It's a right, goddamn right. compliment, Don. Fucking take it. <laughs> Jesus I Christ. I'm like, I am using this fucking massive, incredible brain of mine to construct this beautiful fucking love note. <laughs> love note. To your directing and acting. And, uh, oh, I don't know. I think everybody's been through it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're a fucking goddamn well, gem. Huh? I think it's relatable in that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, it's totally relatable, but I still think it, it, it's just so well done. Well, one of my favorite memories of, of shooting this movie was, the, was that scene. Because, you know, the rest of the movie was... The, the, that was... The rest of the... Pretty much the rest of the movie, like, it's self-explanatory as far as, you know, the comedy and what each character is supposed to be portraying. And then this, so that we're filming this scene, this was a heavy scene, and the moment that it was suggested that you guys kind of step it up a little bit and make it like a an argument, because originally we were filming it like that was part of the conversation. Right. You know, Billy, I'm not giving out IDB credits. And then all of a sudden it was suggested, no, why don't you guys take it up a notch and make it a real argument? Contact, and there's, yeah. and there's yeah. half, I'm not giving out fucking IDB credits. And I remember just like... The feeling in the whole room was like, like, Electric. like you knew it. Right. Like that was it. That now it all just came together. Like you just felt it. Because you know? I feel like that. That's what I guess I'm getting at is that that scene is electric. Yeah. It's it's like I said. It's a comedy, but I feel like the drama bit that's in it is just so beautiful. Yeah. And so absolutely well done. Right. Shot well. Like everything about it is just great. So. Uh, that's awesome. I thank you so much, uh, Andy, for, the, for saying all that. that. That means a lot. And I remember that moment, too, when we were shooting it. And, um, it was Eric Kapp's idea. Eric Kapp's like, hey, you want to try it when we're a little more, more arguing more? Right. And we've already done, like, I don't know, like six takes. Right. So we At had least, down, yeah. We, we, yeah, we knew, the, we knew the, di- the dialogue and the beats left and right. So uh, by the time we were now getting into a more of an argument about it, we already had like we were feeling it the lines too so I, I yeah man it was just awesome eric haft man he he really brought it yeah and we we worked late that night it was like one in the morning or something like that and, it was and, um, close to three actually yeah yeah it was a long freaking night and um i think the tiredness helped <laughs> oh yeah you know that's an interesting point yeah, i never thought of that did. yeah yeah you're absolutely right about that oh that's wild um, it's fucking great. The all right. So the big, the big question we asked it the other night in the Q and A, but it's come through here a little bit. Um, New York girl was asking, and Ken Pichel, and even believe it or not, while we the, while we've been doing this show, I got a text from Ziegler. Um, they're all asking. You know, they're all people that couldn't make it on Wednesday. Yeah, John all, Ziegler also he also reached out to me, yeah, which was awesome, and and uh, wished me you know best of luck on on the thing. So did nice. uh, John Lewicki. A, a couple other yeah. uh, other comics have all reached out. You know, and uh, g- gave their support to to the film, which was so huge, man. And uh, but but they're all asking, you know, where how can they get their hands on it at this point if they weren't there on Wednesday? So again, we asked it the other day at the Q and A, but tell us again, you know, what what's next, and you know, uh, eventually how people can uh, can get it. Well, for now, the, the the film we're looking to have a few more screenings. Whether it's going to be um, in, in Long Island and New York. Uh, film festivals, we're still waiting to see. We put our submissions in, see if we get accepted in, and then we'll have those screenings, and I'll definitely spread the word on that. We're also looking on January 11th uh, with Mark Riccadonna and Richie Byrne. Uh, I did an, a, a different film with them, got those guys as well, called Double Eagle. So we're going to premiere both movies, Double Eagle and Comic Sans, 
at um, the comic strip in Manhattan on um, January 11th. Nice. Cool. So there'll be another opportunity to come down and, and see it. Uh, we're going to get a big screen in there and all that, that kind of stuff as well. And it'll be at, uh, at, at, at that club. Um, and they're going to get a, a a big dose of governors because the whole our whole movie <laughs> is governor <laughs> centric. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm going to the West Coast, like I'm an East Coast rapper, and I'm going to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't um, get shot, D. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to premiere it there as well, along with uh, Double Eagle. So it, 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 it'll be a great night. You know, um, aside from all of our cast and crew that makes it out there. We'll also have uh, the cast crew from Double Eagle, which is, you know, the comics like Christy Miller and, and mm-hmm. Richie Byrne uh, and Mark Riccadonna. So that would be cool. That's a good opportunity for people to come out and see it in, in the city. And if and, you don't uh, mind me saying, a lot of the, or some of the crew it, for both movies are the same. Yes, the, the crew, uh, like, um, you know, Leslie Cruz, our DP, who, who filmed the movie. She, she uh, was the DP on, on both films. And um, and a lot of the same crew members were involved in both movies, so uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool to get the band together and and uh, you know go out there. And they also, I think, on the one and January 11th, we're looking at getting some performances from some of the, the cast to do some stand up and things along those oh, lines. Nice. So, so uh, yeah, and then like I said, being film festivals too, and um, I. I I'm gonna also put it on on Vimeo, and you know, to and I'll see if I share it with that people. I, I'm just I, I kind of want to keep it. I'm on the fence. Maybe you guys can help me out. I, I'm, I kind of want to keep it low key, but then I'm getting other people telling me I should share it, and you know, as many people see it as possible. I'm kind of want right now want to keep it keep it private until it, it uh, does the festival circuit and then release it. So mm-hmm. like if I do release it. To where people could share it and spread it all around or whatever if they want to. That, that would be in, like in the summer of 2023. I'm thinking. I think. Um, <clears throat> I, well, yeah, the comic at the comic strip. I think somebody like Ziegler could hopefully get there. He's he's in Pennsylvania, but it's not terribly far. Or Rick Adana. Rick Adana is also in Pennsylvania. No, uh, well, you said Ziegler. Yeah, Ziegler's, oh, Ziegler's in, Pennsylvania. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! I, I, I'm not gonna... <clears throat> I think he moved there just before he got sick. Oh, okay. He's been there for a while. Um, and then I think we should even try and put something together where we help, um, you know, uh, Ken Pichel drive up here to to see it that day. Um, that him would say he'll go to the Fox Theater. In Atlanta. Yeah, that's Ken Pichel. Yeah, the Fox Theater is awesome. I think that's the last place um, Prince performed at. But I've been to the Fox Theater many times. Oh, wow. uh, beautiful uh, theater, dude. Make it happen, Ken. All right, yeah, Ken. You know somebody over there, and we'll. Uh, well, I'll, that would be cool. I'll go down there. Oh, now he's saying he can wait till the summertime. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think you should give it some time to uh, get out there a little bit. That's yeah. just my personal feeling. I, I, I agree. I think I think your your kind of tactic of like there being a bit of a buzz and yeah. you know what? It's all right if some of the people who didn't see it kind of forget that. It was there because even on my page, people were asking me, oh, how, how, how would I be able to see it? And I'm like, ah, you know, he's shopping it around. So like it's going to be a while. But don't worry, we'll we'll all go fucking nuts when it do- when it is available for everybody. Yeah, to see. sure. It. So it's it, it has it still has the. You know, it's still going to jump when it's available to people. So unless you guys are willing to pay like 50 bucks or something. <laughs> you know, then you know. T- I t- mean, ha- how yeah. are you with blowjobs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take my pay in blowjobs. But, <laughs> but yeah, for now, if if people do want to see it and it's premiering at a uh, a festival or something like that, then you can come out and see it there. I I, I prefer people to see it on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, yep. Yeah. But um, but and then again, the comic the the, uh, the comic strip, I believe that's going to be open to the public. Uh, um, Rick Adon is still working on details on that, so that's where it's going to be. I know for a fact on January 11th, and then we're uh, like I said, the festival circuit. We just got to get accepted into these festivals. They're submitted, and then if they accept us, then um, I'll, I'll put out that information as well, and people can come out and watch the screenings. That'd even, be fun. Even the people at the Belmore Theater, um, 
because the Belmore Theater, they host one of the Long Island Film Festivals. Um, they've been doing that for a long time, and they get a lot of independent films that play in there. Um, even they stop me at the end of the night. They're like, just want to tell you, this movie was really good. Yeah, well, I was like, yeah, well, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it so. was, uh, hearing all that, <laughs> hearing what, like, what Joe Carletto had written and all the other um, accolades of people have said it's just been uh kind of overwhelming in, in a positive way and, and uh yeah i'm just kind of riding the high right now and uh, i just want to keep keep that going that high going and, and keep building on this thing and, and uh you know keep climbing the mountain make yep. uh, you, you know what's a great way to keep that high going how's that cocaine <laughs> <laughs> do a lot of cocaine now that you're that a big was, movie uh, star right off a of yeah. hooker's belly it's like nobody, nobody got the eight ball for the fucking after party like I asked. <laughs> and, chat. And, I, you know, I'm just going to, we mentioned it quickly, but I'm just going to mention it again. This, um, I'm showing this picture again as well. It just, we pick on the guy a lot, but it was nice to see uh, Fremder. Absolutely. No, yeah. it was, I, I, I keep on wanting to get to a point where I, like Fremder was a lot of fun because he was sitting right behind us. And uh, Fremder, what was the thing Billy said about, popcorn that i just fucking lost my shit and you were the only other, the two of us are the only ones who realized that he had said something hilarious but i gotta i gotta get it but yeah fremder was was uh it was a gem it was awesome to see you bud yeah absolutely so uh yeah uh let's oh he said he, he i don't think he remembers uh, <laughs> he just wrote uh <laughs> no, it was great to see Fremder there also. Yeah, yeah. First cool. time I met him in, in person. And, oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, it was just cool to see a lot of people that came out, and, and the, the support has been been amazing. So, Yep, 100%, man. Um, congratulations. It really was yeah. a magical night, man. Dude, it was so, so awesome, man. And, uh, again, I can't thank the cast and crew and, and uh, producers and everybody involved in this movie uh, enough. For uh, making it happen, because like I said, the, the stars lined up. We were able to just achieve so much, um, and it just kept getting better and better as we went. Like you know, from conception all the way through to the to the premiere, it was um, just been a real, real positive um, journey, yeah. and uh, everything just kept kept you know falling into place, man. So kudos to everybody involved. Very it's nice. our it's our movie, man. Um, all right, very nice. It's uh, actually time for us to get out of here. So uh, thanks, Don. And Don, um, I, I know this is like, you know, I guess something to talk about off the air, but I'm just going to tell you anyway. Send me send me that file again for tonight's show. I'm having trouble with it. Uh, okay, yeah. Tonight's show, we're going to have um, a ventriloquist, a, a street ventriloquist on the show uh, named named uh, Dr. Jell. And uh, he's a uh, he's pretty, pretty amazing guy, so... Uh, Tune into that tonight, eight PM. Doctor Jell conversation. <clears throat> Very nice. And, uh, so I was, was going to make like a gay porn joke about send me that file, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> see again, Andy I'm glad wants I us didn't. to be gay. I'm Andy glad wants I did. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's tonight at eight o'clock. Conversations, um, and I want to tell you guys too. We've tried twice this week to play uh, Joey Petroni's "Good Times, Bad Times" this week. When it was supposed to air on Tuesday, Joey had some kind of problem. He couldn't get the file to me on time, so we didn't get we didn't have time to air it. Last night, I had it all set. Now, the name of the show, Good Times, Bad Times. It's the title of a Led Zeppelin song. Joey's been using the Led Zeppelin song as the intro for his show. Well, guess uh, what? They finally caught up to yeah. us. They So the show, the show was all set to air last night. Um, I wasn't home. Uh, but Joey reached out to me saying, hey, the show's not on. And I was like, what the? So I couldn't, I wasn't home, so I couldn't check my computer to find out what was going on. So it was, it was like midnight last night when I got home and I checked. And sure enough, YouTube sent me a message. We're not airing this. It violates copyright. And it even said, you know, it Led Zeppelin's good times, bad times. I said, like, oh, shit. I told Joey. He said he's going to remove it. If he gets it done in time, we're going to put it on tonight at 7 o'clock before Don's show. So uh, that's the plan as of now. If it if you don't see it, that means Joey didn't get the file to me on time without the song. <laughs> it's his fucking fault. But we're gonna we're gonna get it uh, on as soon as we can. So we appreciate your patience. And again, yes, yeah, conversations tonight at eight o'clock, and then we're back here Monday. And yeah, it's a short week next week, but it's official. We're gonna be here Wednesday night. Uh, at least me cool. and Jay. 
Hopefully Don, hopefully Andy, hopefully a bunch of guys. But it hopefully it's will Wednesday be Wednesday night. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday night before it's Thanksgiving Eve this coming Wednesday. So uh Yeah. Anybody that wants to come on in and we're gonna have a party in here. Could be come on cool. in. Yeah, right, we'll have a hundred cool, people. Man. So uh there you go. Um so yeah, thanks for uh hanging out with us, Don, on the phone. Yeah. Been a blast, man. Always, Andy, brother. Thanks again, fellas. Love you, man. All right. Love you too, guys. You guys, uh, everybody have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you Monday. See you later.